welcome to Make Today Count, your 20 minutes of fresh conversation served up to inform, educate and inspire an abundant life. I'm your host Ross Dean and each episode I chat to thought leaders, influencers and experts in their game who all have one thing in common, the desire to go the extra mile. Pushing against the status quo to create a richer life for both themselves and those around them. Powered by compassion and driven by the need to leave the world that little bit better than when they arrived. Okay, hi guys, and welcome back to Make Today Count. Today we've got episode 10 um, with Katie Miller. After 10 years within the finance and administration sectors, Katie wanted to fulfill an ambition of creating a virtual assistant business focused on making her clients' lives easier, more organized, and stress-free. And so KM Virtual Office was born. Based in Ipswich, Suffolk, Katie and her team provide a whole range of support services from email management right through to human resources support. Katie, it's fantastic to have you here. How are you? Yeah, good. Thank you. You? Yeah, really well. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time um, this evening. Um, you know, when I speak to people about the podcast and, you know, through my through my day job as a photographer, one of the things that always comes up and one of the challenges that people have are always around time. You know, we can there's there's kind of a whole host of things that we can kind of fix other things with, but time seems to be that element that people just don't have enough of. So I'm really interested in getting into the conversation today because I really think we can make a a real benefit to, to some of the listeners out there. Um, but before we head into that, what I'd love to do, if, if people haven't come across you and your business before, I wonder if you could just give us a bit of a background about how you got to where you are today and just give us a little bit more information about the business. Yeah, okay. So um, I kind of stumbled into the world of being a VA by accident, um, if I'm honest. So I was um, I lived in Worcester and then I relocated um, and I was an energy um, business energy manager um, yeah. looking after the office management side, financial and HR. So I kind of picked up all of the skills that you have a modern day VA for now. Um, but when I relocated, I didn't really know what I wanted to go back into um, moving across the country. So I started um, contacting some of the people that I'd worked with um, and put an idea out there that said, if I was looking to do something on a freelance basis, would you be interested in having some support? Uh, they were all like, yeah, we'll give it a go. Let's, you know, we know you, we know what you're good at um, and how you work. So we'll, we'll trial it. I went from there, really. Um, so those clients spoke to new people. Those new people spoke to new people. Um, and before I knew it, the business kind of had taken off. Um, so I started with just myself. And then mm-hmm. we've slowly grown um, to a small team now of some amazing virtual assistants that all add their own niche um, into the game and um, so we've all got our core set of skills that we like to offer our clients because one fit doesn't fit all so you know everybody's a cup of tea so we we normally have someone that fits everyone perfect and for someone that maybe is coming into this conversation cold maybe they haven't heard of kind of what a virtual assistant is and kind of what they do for um um their clients how would you kind of describe that yeah, so we get that question a lot. Um, normally when we introduce ourselves and we say that we're a virtual assistant, um, you normally get a blank look or the next question is, is what is that? Um, and we try and explain it in a way that um, we we are a combination of office-based roles, but virtually. So you'd have your normal PA um, or office manager. You'd have a, a marketing assistant, a HR consultant, a bookkeeper. So we are those things, but virtually. So we just work away from your office and rather than taking up space in yours. Perfect, perfect. And I'm guessing that you, you get to work with a whole host of different kind of business types, I'm guessing. Yeah, definitely. We work across um, multiple of different sectors and industries from manufacturing to um, fashion design um, all the way then up to uh, digital marketing and um, photographers personal life coaches so it really is across the board and it must be really interesting as well to kind of get involved with all those different kind of niches and and work with all those different people yeah definitely you, t- you tend to learn new things and build skills as you go because there's always something new that you might not have come across um, in an in a industry related um, part that you then kind of learn pick up and move forward with so yeah no two days are the same and it's always really interesting definitely um, um and then kind of when someone sort of comes to um comes to approach you for to, to work with you and um, katie 
is there usually um, similar reasons as to why they need help at that time? Why do they usually come to you for help in their business? Is it specific things? It usually tends to kind of fall in two categories and it's normally the one side of um, our clients where they're just completely overwhelmed, they've got too many things to do and they just don't even know how to organise them, where they'll find the time to get them done Um, Mm. and they're just just at that breaking point where they look at all of their emails in their diary and just think, I don't know what I'm doing and where I've got to be. Um, but we also have the other side of clients where it's it's not necessarily that they don't have the time to do these things. They just realize that actually they don't have the skills to do those. So mm. it's realizing that they want to grow their business, but in order to do that, they can't do X, Y, and Z. So it's better to have someone with those skills that can do them to leave them to focus on the things that they're good at. Yeah. And does it tend to be kind of more on the kind of small business side that you get to work with kind of one man band type businesses or is it kind of a, 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 a sort of a, a big mix of different types of businesses? Completely different mix, really. So yeah. we work from um, solo entrepreneurs right up to um, big manufacturing companies. Um, okay. So it can it really does depend. There's no kind of fixed area, I'd say. And and when you kind of look at the businesses themselves and you have those first sort of kind of con- consultations or conversations um, mm-hmm. with them, what do you kind of sense that um, many businesses are kind of doing wrong when it comes to some of these things that they're having troubles with? Yeah, I think the first thing that, that always springs to mind is that they've got so many things going on in their head all at the same time. Um, and they can't often think about how to get that out and prioritise it and focus on the core tasks that are important at any one time so the key thing that we tend to try and get um, our clients to do is is get it out of your head so we always say you know use a bit of paper brain dump get everything out and then we have a look at how you can prioritize that and organize it and then implement a system to help you stay on top of things perfect perfect um i'm guessing through all the different sectors they probably have their own kind of challenges as well depending on kind of their niche and what they're doing yeah, definitely. So it's always quite different. So we have some people that um, their biggest challenge is that they're in and out of the country all the time and they're catching flights. They've got to make calls in between that time. They've got to work out their travel arrangements, um, which is one area that's always a big concern for people. And then you have the other mm. side where um, we do a lot of lifestyle management um, where it's it's the personal things. So because you're so busy at work all of the time, you, you don't remember to switch your energy tariffs or your MOT. Okay. You get and so there's kind of the business and personal side yeah I guess you never kind of think of that immediately or certainly I didn't in in, you know I sort of focused on when I was thinking about a VA sort of focus on on the business side but then I'm guessing when the clients kind of see the value that they've they've gained in on the business they kind of want you involved in their lives in 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 all the other areas um just just touch upon that a little bit kind of um thinking of someone that kind of runs a business and maybe runs a um, a household um for example with myself i've got two young children what mm-hmm. kind of sort of, what kind of services and and that kind of thing would you kind of offer um, me in that kind of scenario okay so um lifestyle management's kind of um a new thing that's i think has kind of come into the va world over the last 18 months yeah. and it's really evolved from the fact that because we do so much on a business side you become almost like the right arm of your client and then you just evolve and move into their personal life with things as well. Um, okay. So things that we tend to get involved with that help are all your personal diary. So a lot of people have busy um, functions, family events, birthday yeah. parties, anniversaries that need to be organised. Yeah. We do um, Christmas and birthday shopping. So we'll research and buy gifts and actually wrap those for you and get them to um, your relations. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah, so it's, it's all the little things that you would do normally, but because you're so busy and you just don't have the time to entertain those yourselves, it's the mm. little things that we then pick up and do for you. I'm just thinking about that gift bar and coming up to Christmas, that'd be a dream. <laughs> that'd be a dream to have that. <laughs> yeah, funny you say that. A lot of people do. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's the things you don't think about, isn't it? You know, I think we, we do so many things, both in our business and our, and our time, we're, things that we've probably always done. We've always done it a certain way. Um, and it's only until we take a step back, like you say, when you work with clients and you, you get them to put everything down on paper, get it out of their head. Um, it's only then when we kind of realize how much we actually do and kind of how much these things actually take up, I guess. Yeah, definitely. And a lot of people initially think, oh, but I don't want to pay out for someone to do that. Mm. But when you then look on paper about the time that you actually spend and you get a little bit of your life back to spend with your family, 
um, mm. or you're not sitting in the office for hours working out your expenses and you can actually go home at a decent time. Yeah. It starts to balance things out a lot more. Yeah, no, definitely. And I'm guessing with especially um, small business owners, because I guess up until that point, they've probably been running, running with everything on their own, you know, doing their accounting, doing their invoicing, doing their communication, doing the customer service elements. I'm guessing for some people, it, it kind of comes to a point where they they haven't asked for help. So it just all comes to a head and it all kind of starts to fall away a little bit. And you know, from my only personal experience in the early days of my business, I know there was there was overwhelm in different areas there. Why is it that do you think we we let it get to that point and why we don't maybe kind of reach out for help a little bit before we need to? I think that's kind of something that's built. It's a self preservation thing. I think we all mm. always want to think that we can manage everything on our own. We don't need to ask for help. We can do this. We we started our own business, and and you know we're going to make it. And I just think sometimes you you almost need to take a step back and think actually. Uh, yeah, I have started this business. It's doing really, really well. I'm just really good at these core tasks. But these things I either don't know how to do, I don't think they're my strongest areas, or I just I need further training on. And therefore, mm. in order to grow your business, it's better to take a step back and say, actually, I do need a little bit of help and, and look for those people that do have the skills to mm. fill in the resources that you're missing. Yeah. I know from speaking to other business owners, one of the things that comes up, especially in the early days of running a business is that, you know, you think because it's your baby that only you can do the things that you've always done in your business. And, and then kind of handing that off is, is such a, is such a big thing for a lot of people. And I think that plays a big part in that, you know, you can hold on for as long as you can, but there is a kind of a breaking point where maybe your business has grown to the extent where it just gets bigger and you, you just can't handle it. Um, or maybe you just need to, maybe you need staff or people to help you out but obviously you know VAs are a a much more sort of economical and sort of user-friendly option in regards to um you know you don't have the sort of contractual elements of having actual physical staff is that right Mm -hmm. yeah definitely so there's a lot of benefits of using a VA and either long term or on a short term basis so yeah we've had clients that where they've started to grow their business and they don't necessarily want to take on a full-time member of staff just yet because they don't know how it's going to work they don't know how much work they've got to give them we've yeah. been used as an interim for that so it's like okay well let's look at your business let's help you set up your systems your processes your procedures and let's develop the role with you you can control how much you'd like to use us and 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 what you want us to do and then eventually once that builds up we have either found that you then end up working either a part-time basis as a VA all the time for them, or yeah. it's that transitional period where I actually think, well, I'm really growing now and, and I think I'm going to need someone to come into the office and be with me 24-7. And then there's that transition of training. So I think there's a lot of benefits in the fact that, you know, you, you pay for the time that you use. There's, there's no yeah. pay YE, there's no holiday, yeah. Yeah. annual leave, um, which, you know, as a small business, it, it's cost-effective. To keep those things down if you can um we use our own equipment so there's no expensive outlay in having to buy computers and all sorts yeah. for everyone yeah no definitely and I, I think from you know what you touched upon there as well you can kind of you can kind of grow you know, you, the relationship can grow as you, as you grow. I think a lot of people just think that you've got to take on, you know, a VA like you would do some like with a normal member of staff, and it's got to be for a certain amount of time, and you, you know, you you're kind of contracted to that. But as you were saying, you can kind of piecemeal, kind of take smaller steps first. Maybe some of the smaller jobs that um, are, are kind of you know um, giving you some problems or or challenge you in some way, and then kind of build it up from there, which is which is a really good. Yeah, definitely. And, and we've, we've often found that's how the majority of our clients come on board. So they're, yeah. they're not sure how they want to work. They just want an hour here or there. And before you know it, you're then working X amount of hours for them because the relationship's grown. You learn about the business. You then become a sound, sounding board for them so that they yeah. can kind of bat off of the di- ideas. Because when you are a one-man band or a small business, sometimes that's really difficult when you're on your own to think about where do I go next? So having that other person in there just to be able to talk things through sometimes is beneficial. That's a really good point, Katie, actually. You know, one I haven't touched upon before is that, you know, if you're working for yourself, you know, you often, for some people, um, there may be not much interaction with 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 clients. Maybe it's all done online. Maybe, you know, you're you working out of your office at home or something like that. Mm-hmm. And 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 with the best will in the world, if you've got a partner or other family members, they can, they can understand to an extent 
extent, I think. Um, but in, it, it's until you kind of work in within that space, you know, you can really get um, some feel for what it's like. So that's a really good point, actually, that, um, you know, you often, I, I, I guess you are often a sounding board for a lot of people sort of going through ideas and different bits and pieces. Yeah, definitely. Because like you say, you, you don't, as much as your partner wants to understand and is very supportive mm. of you, they yeah. don't know the inside of your business like eventually your VA does because they, they're they involved in lots of different aspects of your business. So they can tend to see things from a new perspective, give you yeah. new ideas, you know, yeah. look at look at how things are working and maybe improve that or put a new process in, look at a new system just to keep you moving with technology and the times. Yeah, definitely. So if so, if, if we, what I'd love to do is kind of go through kind of the, the process for kind of um, for working with someone. So if I was coming to you and with an inquiry, say I've got something, what would be the kind of the, the, the next steps? Would it be kind of you taking the time to find out about the business and sort of a consultation type situation? Yeah, so how we work is we generally get an inquiry come through um, and then we'll jump on a discovery call um, and I'll, I'll find out a little bit more about you as a person, about the business and the core areas that are you're looking for support on or if you're not quite sure on those areas, just the areas that you're struggling with. Mm. We then tend to work on a brainstorm. So we then say, okay, well, let's, let's have a look. Let's grab a piece of paper and I want you to write down everything that you don't like to do everything that you don't have the skills to do, jobs that you just hate doing, um, and things that you don't have the time to do. And we tend to break it into those sections. And then before you know it, you've already got, okay, well, these things I don't have the skill set for, therefore I'm I'm missing that resource. Could a VA help me in that side? Or these are the things I just hate doing. Um, Quite often it's your expenses. Can someone help me with those? So it's, it's a case of having the discovery call breaking down the areas that they feel that they struggle with and then coming up with solutions to make that easier for them. So um, implementing new systems, having a look at the applications and the programs that they currently use just to see if that's something that we can make better. Mm. Um, Because we do tend to use a lot of applications as a VA. So there's normally something that can work better than what you're using. So it's always worth um, allowing your VA to give you ideas and I think that's really important I think a lot of people want an, a VA but don't really understand that you do get out what you put in so if yeah. you if you give us the tools be completely honest with us lay it out on the line we can really advise you and kind of help you get to where you want to be a lot quicker than if you hold back yeah and I'm guessing through those discovery calls as well probably people come in thinking they've got maybe one or two things they want help with but once they've kind of talked it through with you I'm guessing that that list kind of gets bigger (laughs) and bigger bigger and bigger sometimes by the end yeah definitely you can we've had calls where we've had um, one client just thinking they wanted support with email management but yeah once we've had a conversation they've then started thinking about all the other little things that they'd like to phase in at some point because Oh, they they suddenly realise that oh actually you could do that or you can do that so it's not until you start talking with someone and yeah. you realise w- what they can offer you to support you going forwards. Yeah, I bet. And Kate, you mentioned a bit before that you have kind of like a, a team that kind of works with you to deliver the services. Um, after that kind of discovery call situation, are you kind of allocated a, a, a sort of a, a contact or a person within the business? Yeah, so we all VA businesses work slightly differently, but the way that we work is um, after the discovery call and we've brainstormed everything, we then look at the support that you need and we fit that to a VA that has the best skills to support you going forward. Okay. Um, and then that person is your port of call all the time. So we have you'd have your VA, and then what would happen is there's a second which is assigned to know everything in the background, so that if they're on holiday or sick, um, then there's a streamlined so it just someone can just slot in and pick up where they left off so there's mm. no gap in service and I'm, and I'm guessing the early stages after you've been assigned um someone to work with i guess it's then it's kind of for them to learn about your kind of processes and and kind of how you run things and like you mentioned before kind of like sharing of documents and information how does how does that kind of work and how do you kind of um correspond with each other is it through um email or is it through kind of other services so we tend to um, try and adapt however the client likes to work in the, in the easiest way. So we have clients that just prefer to communicate via WhatsApp and email. Some people okay. like um, weekly or bi-weekly calls. Mm-hmm. Others just want to communicate through Slack. Um, mm-hmm. So it really does depend. We adapt to what works for the client better. 
um, because some some of our clients aren't UK based, so time zones are a bit of a challenge sometimes. So they just like um, email contact. Um, we have clients that we meet face to face regularly. So it, although we're virtual, there is that element that we do like to get out and see people, so they remember what we look like, um, and we are humans, which yeah. is always quite nice. That's, that's, I think that's a really good point as well, is that I think when a lot of people, if they haven't used the services before, their initial thought is because it's virtual, it's kind of like a faceless type service in that respect, in that the, maybe they, you know, you won't be speaking to the same person each time. Maybe um, you, you'll ask someone to do something, they won't be fully aware of the, of the procedures and that kind of thing, or maybe you wouldn't even meet. So that's that, that's really interesting and, and I think will will help a lot of people understand that it is it's getting towards almost having a... a you know, a proper staff member in that way, isn't it? It's just without, with a different kind of setup. Yeah, definitely. And it's really important that um, you can trust your VA implicitly and um, 100% with everything. And um, so I think the major thing when someone's looking for a VA is that to make sure that you've got a good personality fit because yeah. you need to be able to just fall in sync with each other and start to think how they think, work how they work, because you'll become much more useful to your client if you can adapt to the way that they work day in day out yeah and so the way we like to try and work is that you you know you always have that one person um that you they learn the business they learn your little quirks they like they know what time you like to make calls and what time you like to eat dinner Um, and you learn all of those little things and I think you only do that when you have one person that works directly for you and can learn everything about you so um one of the major things that we push um at km is that we don't you, you are you are fitted with one VA and that person is there for the duration for however long you want to use the service. Yeah. And when you're kind of working with kind of documents with, with clients or things like that, um, is it a case of um, you give the VA access to your kind of infrastructure or kind of how does that work or do you set up a kind of a new repository somewhere? So um, we tend to work with um, the client files. So however the client wants to distribute those, we have... Okay. Um, cloud-based systems where we share documents um, and there's password protection and security vaults and things like that. So mm. you have to go through through a long process of a tick list to make sure that you, you are compliant on some areas and that you're you're you know you're making sure that your data protection is in there. So you have to you one you vet your VAs completely um, to how they work. Um, and secondly you just need to make sure that you've got your systems and your processes in order to make sure that they can access everything as when they need it. Yeah. And I guess, and like you say as well, you know, if you've got a VA that's maybe on holiday or something, it needs to be easily sort of picked up and sort of carried on by someone else, I guess. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It needs to be easily accessible, um, which is why there's always two, be, two VAs that would know one client's um, background so that yeah. if someone wasn't available, the other person can just pick up perfect perfect um, and I'm guessing you know when you have those sort of early consultations with with clients and maybe they haven't yet fully signed up I'm guessing that you um you hear a lot of kind of things that I guess we tell ourselves about why we can't maybe use a VA or maybe we why can't outsource mm-hmm. some of the stuff um you touched upon at the beginning about you know um maybe the belief is that it's too expensive and we spoke about um kind of like how it's kind of a a, a pay-as-you-go type situation with, with you guys and how you can kind of grow as as your business grows with you know how much help you get are there any yeah. other other kind of kind of myths we tell ourselves around that you found from experience as to you know why someone or why we can't use um, a VA? I think the biggest thing that we come across is um and, and the most asked question to us is how can mm. you support me when you're virtual so I okay. think for a lot of people, it's really hard to grasp the concept that they're not going to be sat next to you mm. in an office with you. And therefore, mm. the service level wouldn't be as good as if it was if you were um, in a room with that person. Okay. I think the most important thing to remember is when you're looking for a VA is to you know look at the, have a chat with them, look at the kind of clients that they use and um, that they've worked with, the skills that they can offer if they're a really good fit for you. Um, and, and just to remember that a VA can do everything that someone sat in an office next to you can do, if not a little bit better, shall we say, because yeah. we, don't, we don't have the distractions that everyone else has that's sat in that office. And I think, you know, you mentioned there about kind of what to look out for when, when working with someone. I think, like anything, you know, I think when you start to have 
a, the, the early conversations maybe you've set up a consultation call or a discovery call as you, as you mentioned before I think you just get a feel for someone and their personality and I think that's a, a consideration as well isn't it because you're going to be working with someone you know um, for potentially a long time you want to get someone that you you know you pick someone in the same way that you'd pick a staff member and it's got to be someone that you kind of you know as long as the professionalism's there it's got, got to be someone that you kind of get on with as well. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's probably one of the most important things um, when you take on a VA is to spend that time to have a normal conversation. Yes, go through all of the business sides and and the ideas around the implementation, but actually just talk to that person because that is the way that you're going to commu- communicate most of the time. So it's important that you, you can click, and, and I use that word loosely, but clicking is really important and it's something that we push really hard at KM and and honesty. So we're very Mm. much with our clients. If we can't do something, we'll be very honest with you and let you know that we can't do it. That's not to say that we wouldn't find a solution or someone that could do it for you. But I just think making sure that the personality is a right fit for you and that they've got that honesty about them um, because everybody can claim to be... um, can do everything for you and that's yeah. not ideally what you want sometimes you just need to have that honesty level no definitely and like you said before just a sounding board to get you know sort of bounce ideas off sometimes as well but i think yeah, i totally agree you know it's a it's, it's trust building isn't it in that in those early stages and making sure that you know from if someone's kind of handing over elements of their business um to, to someone that's new um that they feel that they're fully comfortable because if they feel uncomfortable then that relationship's going to be a lot better going down the road yeah definitely and if you think about it i mean this day and age we're all about technology so the first things that a va tends to have access to are your email and your diary and yeah. most of your life is within those emails if you if you're working 24 uh, 7 which most of our clients are so if you've then got to trust that va with all of that information you need to feel that you can trust that va and i think that's just really important to to talk to a few people before you go down the option of one. Don't just yeah. go- Google a VA that's maybe local to you. I'd always recommend yeah. having a look around, seeing, speaking to four or five different people because you mm. will naturally find a good fit for you by talking to them because we, you know, we're not perfect for everyone. Uh, you know, yeah. some people might not like us and some people will love us and that's just, that's just the way that life goes. So it's about finding the right fit for you. And also personal, you know, personal recommendations as well. You know, um, there's no better way than kind of if you've know someone that works with a VA or has worked with them in the past, you know, to get that, you know, is obviously for someone that you know, like and trust that you can kind of get some feedback from, you know, even if it's kind of going out to your social media and saying, look, does anyone work with a VA and can you sort of recommend anyone? I guess sometimes having that kind of personal connection um, is really valued when it comes to um, taking on new services. I think that, that 100% spot on. Um, I can honestly say that the majority of all of our clients have come through recommendations from either previous clients or people okay. that know, know us. And I think yeah. that's the biggest way that VAs actually find clients because because it's such a personal thing, people have people want a recommendation from someone that they trust yeah. to put forward. They don't just want to pick someone out of a hat. No, definitely. And like any sort of... T- um, any kind of referral or recommendations that we do from business to business, you know, those referrals reflect on our business as well. So we only want to put forward people that we, (laughs) you know, you really, we really believe in that are going to do a great job. So now that's a really good point. Um, As you mentioned before, at the top of the podcast, you get to work with a plethora of all different types of businesses, which must be really interesting to work in all those different niches. Um, Are there any kind of particular challenges that maybe come to mind that maybe a business have has had in the past and some of the ways that you've kind of um, allowed them to sort of get around that and to really build some success for them? Uh, Yeah. So um, we've kind of, like you say, gone across the board with the industries and types of clients that we've worked at. I think probably one of maybe the biggest challenges that we've worked for was um, a manufacturing company where they um, didn't have an in-house HR or training um, support resource to call upon. Um, And we found that they were finding it very hard to maintain um, training records, to make sure that um, qualifications were always up to date and to have um, up-to-date systems and procedures for all of the things that they do within the business. So we we were kind of brought in to um, initially help with um, getting the HR records and all the personnel stuff um, up to date and in order and in line with GDPR. And then we moved on to having a look at how to implement a cloud-based HR system for them 
and so that they could actually manage it in-house themselves. So sometimes what we do is more of a consultancy thing. Uh, we can go mm. in, set the systems up for them and actually give them the training to allow them to do it themselves going forward. So it really is a think out of the box kind of role. It's not a, I'm going to have a VA, so I'll have a VA forever. It's sometimes yeah. there are consultancy VAs out there that can help you put things in place to manage things on your own. That's, that's, that's a really good point about, I guess, giving your clients the ownership and being self-sufficient going forward as well. Um, you know, so they maybe they don't have to rely on you for the same things, but then they can empower their own employees taking on the kind of the, the structure that you guys have worked upon um, to really give their, their own staff some and themselves some kind of ownership on everything. Yeah, definitely. And, and that's probably one of the really nice things that we like to do because it means that we can get, get in somewhere, implement a system, train a team and then get them used to knowing what they do. And, and like you say, some people might think you're doing yourself out of some work there, but effectively the, the main end goal is to achieve what that client wants. And once that client's yeah. happy, that means that we've done our job. Um, which means we're happy. And as a result from that, we still work on a consultancy basis for that client. So when they need to look at new systems or um, they need databases created and things like that, they then tend to come to us first to discuss how they can make that work. So it's always worth, as I say, being honest and kind Mm. of doing the best thing for the client over what's good for you. I think, again, you know, we mentioned it before, but just that trust element, you know, building trust in, in that kind of ongoing relationship. If you've known, if you've worked with someone that's helped you get to a point where you're, you know, you're really flourishing and then you've, they've also enabled you to, you know, um, you know, empower their staff as well, you're going to be the, the, the first at the top of the pile when they, they need something else done, isn't it? It's just the, how generally things work in that way. Yeah, definitely. It's exactly how it works. So if, if someone, if you let's say, for example, Kate, you were stuck in a lift with someone and they said, what do you do? And you sort of explained to it and they said to you, what are the real benefits of, of using a VA? If you can kind of, if you could kind of sum it up, um, I know it's very difficult because of a few of the things that we've spoken about tonight, <laughs> I go off on a few different tangents, but what would you feel that the, the real core benefits are for, for, for someone in business if they're working with a VA? I think the, the major thing is, is actually getting some headspace back. And I think that's really important. So when you're actually running a business on your own, you need that time to be able to think about the creativity side. But if you're bogged down with all of the tasks that are in your head that you've got to process and work through, um, that's really hard to do. So I think having a VA on board that you can literally brain dump to, get it all out, give it to someone else to prioritize for you into a task list so you don't have to do that would be a major benefit. Um, and, and secondly, that sounding board, um, mm. we found that that happens to be one of the biggest things that we are used for day in, day out is, you know, can I just jump on a call and can we just talk something through? I've got a new idea and I'm not sure how to make that work. What do you think? And I think those two things are so important for someone to be able to be able to take a step back, talk to someone with new ideas and actually just get some headspace to concentrate on the core focus that they want to do. No, oh, definitely. That's really good points there as well. Um, so if I know, you know, people listening to this have, have probably got a heap of new things that are kind of wearing on in their mind, thinking about how they can kind of visualize and how they could use um, VA services. Um, if someone wants to kind of, they're sort of on the fence still, and maybe they want to kind of take that first step, maybe tomorrow, what would you encourage people to do? You know, there's not a ton of work, but just maybe sort of dipping the toe into the water into maybe anticipating how they could get involved with you guys. Yeah, I think um, the first thing is uh, have a call either with us or with any VA. Um, just ask for a phone call to have a conversation about about their lifestyle, about the business, what, what they're kind of thinking, um, because some people might be torn between a VA or having a PA, and it's nice to just have both sides of the coin to talk it out through. Have a general idea about the kind of things that you are looking for support on or the things that you're struggling with because then that yeah. gives us an easier conversation to kind of point you in the right direction. And sometimes it might just be that it's, it's a conversation with us and actually we can give you some advice on some applications that would make your life easier rather than having to pay for a VA. Sometimes just having that chat with us and allows you to just organize things a little bit yourself so it's worth just jumping on a call and having a chat and talking things through um and just seeing what you think really and if a va is really a good fit for you yeah and as you said before you know get in touch with the you know two or three and then you can get a good sense of kind of how different people work and and kind of which ones are a good fit for you 
yeah, definitely always talk to more than one person. Um, I'd, I'd 100% recommend that because each VA is very different and we're, we all work in slightly different ways. So one way that I work might not work for someone else and yet it would work perfectly for another person. So it, it's definitely worth kind of talking to a couple of people to get a good idea and, and see if that personality fit works as well. Yeah. So if you're listening and you're thinking about sort of getting into um, maybe speaking about um, you know, a VA role for your business. Some really great tips there from sort of getting yourself involved and, and kind of, that's what it's all about really. You know, sometimes we kind of think, right, we're going to do this. And then we sort of plan, we're going to go do this, 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 and this, and we put, just put too much on our plate. Um, mm-hmm. And then we maybe fall at the first hurdle sometimes and we think, Oh God, I'm, this is rubbish. I'm, I'm going to just spin <laughs> it. Um, but I think this is what it's all about giving you small actionable steps. I mean, like you say, even if it's just having a, a small conversation with a couple of people in an informal way, just really finding out about how they can help your business um, and also putting in a little bit of time beforehand, as you mentioned there, Katie, around just planning in advance of that conversation. Some of the things you'd like to will um, we'll make that conversation move more freely and be more valuable to you. Yeah, definitely. If you've just got a, just even a really basic idea of the kind of core areas that you might want support on, you'll get a good feeling from that VA um, when they're talking things through if, to, yeah. if that's a good fit for you. Yeah. So amongst all the, the the lovely clients that you guys are working with and everything else you've got going on, is there any particular things or new services or things that you've got going on at the moment that you, you kind of want to talk about today? Yeah, we've got a bit of an exciting um, new, new thing for us going on at the moment. We're currently working on a um, VA Back to Basics and Essentials course um, that okay. will be available on the website in the new year. So we're a bit excited about that. Um, and it just kind of covers, it really focuses on if you want to go into being a VA, if you're just starting out and you mm. really want to understand the basics of how to set up all of the little pitfalls that we went through when we started, um, okay. just getting a bit of an insider. So that's currently a work in progress at the moment. And has that kind of spun from maybe you getting inquiries, not on a professional working basis, but on a kind of like, how do we get into this kind of field sort of thing? Yeah, I get quite um, a few emails um, or posts on Facebook or Instagram mm. asking um, little bits of advice here and there or or how did you go about this or what would you do or I'm thinking about starting a business. And mm. I just think um, when you start on your own and you, and you build something like this, you learn all of the great things to do and the things to avoid. And it would be really good to get those in one place that people can then access and work through to help them support build their business. That's a really good point, actually, because there may be people sort of listening to this, maybe thinking, maybe I don't run a business, but maybe I work within a corporation, maybe I work within a, a business myself, and maybe I've I've done a kind of an administrative, financial, accountant type role for, you know, a period of time. You know, I've I've built up a a really good kind of resume on, on the, the skills that I have, but maybe I mm-hmm. want to branch out and start to work on my own. So that's a, that's a really good point, actually. Is there's a there's um I think there's a lot of people that um kind of that moving into building their own business and being an entrepreneur on their own is is very enticing I think these days isn't it you know with that kind of flexibility on your time where you work and I'm I'm guessing probably as well um talking about VAs you can kind of work from anywhere I guess you can and that's the joy I think with more and more emphasis on remote working and flexible working these days everybody wants it the joy of being a VA is that you can work Mm. from any country any location um, mm. as long as it's got really good internet connection and you're not going to be disturbed you, you can pretty much work from anywhere mm. so I think and, and like you say it's it has the skill sets that you can adapt from any other role that you've generally done within an office administration finance or HR background so mm. if, if you are then thinking actually I've, I've been in the corporate world for 10 15 years and I actually still like what I do but I want to step away from that and work for myself then then this is an opportunity for you to actually put your skills into something different and I'm guessing as well, you know, not just the kind of those core kind of office based skills, but especially if you work in a, a specific niche sector, perhaps, and you've got specific, um, you know, knowledge on a certain subject, you know, that could be huge going forward, couldn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, really, definitely. The, the, the door is wide open for a VA. So if you have got a set skill um, um, that you're good at and you've done for years, then there's no reason why that you then couldn't just support someone else in, in doing that and providing that service. Mm that's so amazing i sort of you know um arranged for you to come on and, and have a chat with the initial thought of of just kind of serving those people that kind of wanted to work with the va but it was almost op- within the last five minutes it's opened up to maybe this whole host of other people um that could be find what you do really interesting and and certainly 
um, from what you're building there on the on the website um, with the sort of the training elements. So it sounds sounds fantastic. Is is the is the website the place to sort of you know, look for that next year? Yes, yeah, there'll be a, a whole section um, for training on the website that we're um, under development at the moment. So that will be the core place to go and have a look around and it will give you the, an overview of, of what's included in the courses and, and how, how it works. Um, and there's also, um, there'll be one-to-one um, consultations with myself so that you actually get a chance to, mm. as well as working through a training programme, actually being able to jump on a phone call and talk to, talk to a VA that's been through it. Yeah. So if you're listening to this and um, we're recording in December or no, no November, nearly December, <laughs> nearly. Um, nearly, Dece- nearly December of 2019. So that will be available um, in early 2020. That, Katie, it's been so f- fantastic um, kind of having a chat with you tonight. And I really appreciate your time and, and sort of sharing a little bit more. I think it's a it's an area where people kind of know a little bit about it. Um, but this, I think this conversation has really enhanced their um, sort of knowledge on and maybe wanted to take the next step into working with a VA if people want to kind of get in touch with you um, via um, website and social media what's the kind of the best place to to reach out to you yeah so um, website is always um, one of the best places which is uh, www.km-virtualoffice.co.uk and um, but we do have live um, Facebook and Instagram um, accounts as well which we do get a lot of people that tend to drop us a message on there yeah um, and um just email as well so i'm always on the end of email so if you want to drop an email you've got any random questions about anything then just send an email to hello at km-virtualoffice.co.uk that's perfect and all those links will be on the show notes page um, of the website for the podcast as well if you want to click through to those again thank you Katie so much for your, for your time this evening you know from um, we got connected via um, a mutual acquaintance who I know kind of has used your services before and was raving about what you did um, so you know you're obviously my first choice to come and have this, this conversation but just on you know from what I can see on your Instagram and all your other channels as well I can just kind of see the the benefits that all your clients have with, with working with you know your whole team so thank you from mm-hmm. behalf of your clients for for serving them in such a great way no problem and thanks to them because without them we wouldn't be able to do it so perfect thank you so much okay guys that's it if you've enjoyed this episode of the podcast what i'd love you to do is leave a comment on the show notes page or if you're listening to this via itunes or spotify one of those we'd really love a review so please feel free to leave us a review on there but until next time i've been ross dean this has been make today count and i'll see you again soon bye-bye